I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and welcome to issue number four of the Fast and the Furious Dodge Charger RT build, the legendary Dodge Charger RT. Uh, this is a magazine and part work from Fan Home, who have kindly supplied me with this part work so I can build it for you. So thank you very much to them. Uh, on with the build this week, we are doing things with the brakes. So this is why I've got the, the wheel out from the previous issue. You remember we built this, it looked lovely at the time and still does, it's still, it's heavy. Even for a wheel, it's heavy and meaty and substantial. This pack is not quite as heavy as the wheel, but it's got some weight to it. Uh, we've got a collection of screws once again, loads and loads of different screws in this build, but props to them. They have very kindly and very nicely labelled all the bags and these are proper resealable bags as well. So it, best way of doing it that I've seen in a part work. Uh, EM, uh, GM, I don't think I've seen GM before. Uh, FM, I don't think I've seen them before either. CM and finally IM. Now all of these, the M denotes metal. So these are going into metal parts. There's, upside down for some reason anyway uh so yes uh if the, it was plastic it would be cp thusly uh we've got springs parts and i assume most of this is therefore going to be metal this, this doesn't look like it is but we'll find out when we get to the build itself as ever i'm going to have a look through the magazine first and see what what joys and interesting stories and articles they tell us about this time uh the world of fast and furious Obviously, Dominic Toretto, Dom, the, the main character of all of the films. Vin Diesel, yeah, all about him, birth of the character, uh, different films that Diesel's been in. Obviously, close ups of cars and things, and Moody sitting on the skyline, but yeah. Uh, Dodge, a uh, new uh, true legend. Uh, when you see the emblematic Dodge Challenger in Fast and Furious, you're also looking to see an important part of the history of the American automobile industry. Yes, okay, there we go. Uh, right, so this is the front left brake and suspension. It's there. If, if you didn't know where the front left of a car was, it's that bit. Like they told us about the bumper last time, it's that bit. Now, all of these parts are lovingly laid out and labelled and have proper names to them. We've got disc brake, piece one, piece two, upper front left control arm, shock absor absorber, pistons. I've completely forgotten about all of those already. I know that's a spring, but yeah, what does it say? It's just what? I, it's spring. Yes, I, I can remember that one, but the rest of it I've already forgotten about. So I shall be, instead of flicking backwards and forwards, which is an option, I might end up doing that. Uh, what I'm most likely going to be doing is matching the shapes. So I'll find the bit that looks a bit like that, the bit that looks a bit like that, and then putting them together thusly. Uh, so, yes, the instructions for this go over three pages. So at some point I shall be turning the page. Uh, but I shall put the pages up in the corner for you so you can follow along with the build and shout at the screen when I make obvious mistakes and forget bits and use the wrong screws and, and things like that. Uh, yes, so 4.1, put the parts of the brake disc 4E and 4E, 4D and 4E, these are these. Uh, they're plastic, or well, that plastic, that one is also plastic. It's got an interesting knurling piece on the inside. Uh, put them together by inserting the pins on piece one into the corresponding holes in piece two. There's pins on there, there's holes on there. Now, does this matter which way around it goes? I doubt very much that it does. That goes into that hole and that goes into that hole, yeah. So there we go, that just fits together, just like that. Uh, the painting on the edge there is a little bit rough, but I'm assuming this is obviously gonna be internal anyway, so you're not gonna see any of it. So I'm not worried about that in the slightest. Right, I'm putting the wheel hub 4B. That looks like that probably. Yeah, that looks very much like that. Uh, that's going on to there. Now there are three holes on that. Uh, right, inserting and positioning the pin into the small hole in the assembled brake disc 4E. That's this bit. Okay, let's see if we can't get that turned round to fit in. I can see, yeah, there's two like screw holes and one pin. So the pin goes in there, so the holes line up through there. You can see that if I rotate it, it no longer lines up. So we'll get that like that. And then we're using some CM screws to hold that in place. So I need two CM screws. There's two. 
that over there. We're obviously going to be using more of those throughout. Uh, so let's again get the pinion lined up, holes lined up. Let's get the bottom hole lined up there. Right, and get that turned in just a couple of turns. That's holding it in place and making sure it's all okay before I put the second one in. It now can't move, but let's just tighten it down a little bit. Don't need to go crazy. Just to hold it in place, it's not got to support anything other than itself by the looks of it. It's not moving so far. So good, it's not quite right. Something's... Ah, there we go. It just wasn't quite... Pushed in. It looks like those screw holes also locked down inside. So make sure that's lined up properly. That's why you should always make sure it's lined up before you go back and tighten them up. So that's okay. I'm happy with that now. Uh, right, 4.3. Insert the axle spindle 4C. That's got to be that bit. Yeah, that looks like that. Uh, into the hole, forgetting about that, we're going to use another piece. The, the brake caliber base plate. So that's going through there, that way round like that yeah the little pins so we've got four holes oh it's a shaped outside so that's got a line up there that goes in there like that and we're putting two cm screws in there so let's get two more cm screws out uh putting these so you position in all the holes as shown join with two cm screws so only the top two holes I'm putting screws into or at least that's all we're doing at the moment let's get one in hold it in place get the other one in double check that it's all where it should be then we can come back and tighten them down join with two cm screws yes right uh 4.4 Four. Insert the spindle and base plate assembly into the center hole of the brake disc 4E. That's the bit we've just done. So that's in there. Now that goes into the inside there. Okay. Cool. So that turns. I'm liking that. I'm liking that quite a lot. Uh, it means we can't get to those two screw holes from there. But okay, we won't worry about that. Uh, then slide the brake caliper for A, that's the coloured bit, which I can't get out. That's, that is metal, I'm surprised at that, but I'm happy with that. Nice bit of detail painting on there with the name, embossed, cool. Uh, right, so that is going over there and over there like that, okay. Uh, and that's being held in place with two CM screws. Just using the CM screw, I'm going to leave them out there actually. I'll leave one in there because there's normally one spare. But I'll leave the packet there so I know which ones they are if I do get some other ones out in the next few minutes. Get that through there and then onto that first hole. And one more. Doing the same. Through there. I just picked it up by this and wondered why it moved, but because it moves, it's it's free to turn. So let's get these tightened up a bit. Uh, yeah, fix the current place with CM screws. Doing that. Now we're putting that aside. We're moving on to the rest of it. So we've got the big bit, which is lovely. Uh, I'm going to get the rest of the parts out, in fact. So I don't have to worry about that. Check to make sure there's nothing left inside the packet before you... Throw it to one side of the room. Right, let's get all of these out and organized so I can see what I'm doing. Right, so I'm taking the uh, 4G, uh, the absorber cylinder. It's fitting into there. There is a um, two flat sides to that. So it will only go in in two ways. One way and 180 degrees opposite. So that goes through there like that. That's being held in place with an EM screw. Let's get single EM screw out. In there, that in there. And that is holding that in place. 
not liking that terribly much it doesn't feel like it wants to tighten up very much in there um it just says attach it doesn't say it's got to be very tight or not but i'm not happy that that's fitting like that so let's try undoing it and do it up again no that is as tight as that's going so that's got some movement but we'll see if i'm happy with that as we go further on to the build let's have a look for f is this piece which is around the back and that's that way round. oh it's going into there right okay there are places for that to attach this is just not not screwed in there's just um it might be screwed in in a bit Yes, FM screws. I should always look ahead before I say something stupid. Two FM screws. One in either side of this. So let's get one through there. Into that. Definitely not tightening that down yet. Make sure the other one goes in and lines up okay as well. Through there. And into that side of it. No, oh, didn't go. Missed it. Missed it completely. Let's try that again, shall we? Put that back out. Come on, out you come. So you can go back in again. Let's try lining that up again now. That looks like it's lined up. But it did last time as well, so... Uh, yep, that's in there and moving. Uh, so look, make sure it's facing the same way as shown in the illustration fix the arm in place so I'm just going to tighten these back up again that's okay and that one is now okay so it's got movement to it which is fine so is that which is probably okay as well it's probably designed to have movement there as well uh, let's have a look we're putting that to one side building another bit we've got the uh, the travel limiter porty, which is that bit. The pin into the upper part of the suspension arm for N, which is that bit, around that way. Uh, does that have a way up? No, that's the same either way up. So that just goes into there, that way round, yep. Okay, that's fine. Uh, insert the eye of the triple absorber piston for H into the slot in the suspension form for N. So that goes... Uh, still that way up. That's going on to there. Lots of circles and things. I'm not sure. No, that's... Yeah, that is there. No. Wait. Why is that dotted line going there? No, that's actually going through there. Right. That's going all the way along to there. It's tellingly not pictured very well. Thank you very much. Uh, and an FM screw to hold those in place. So one screw will go through through one side and then through the bar in the middle and then tighten it the other side by the looks of it. Lined up in there. These are metal parts. They're all, they feel like they're sort of uh, anodized black, sort of uh, almost a, a matte black paint applied to them not sure how well it will hold up with you know wear and movement and stuff but it probably doesn't have to let's see this doesn't feel quite right but i think it's just because i'm not getting that lined up quite right obviously you've got to get the hole in the middle in the right place otherwise the screw can't go through it Feels like that's going through somewhere now, but the screw's still not ideal. I hate to say it, but Fox might have it right. It might be better to add a little drop of oil. Just to make some of these screws go through a little bit easier. But failing that, if you loosen them off a little bit, and then you can tighten them down much easier the second time. So that's the other way of doing it. So yeah, we've got that in there. That's obviously what that limiter bit is for on there. Uh, let's sign it. All right, 4.8. In the same slot on the suspension arm 4N, 
insert the king pin uh, that's that bit so that goes through there and again another fm screw we'll be holding that in place hopefully we won't have the same trouble but i'm sure we probably will Go. that would go in there it looks like it's lined up square with everything that's not going through there so that's not quite right so let's loosen it just a little bit let's wiggle get that try that there it feels a little bit loose a little bit tighten it and then maneuver it and you should be able to feel a loose spot My plan anyway sure that feels looser in the middle there so will that tighten down some more it will and that feels like that's rotating that's good so that's in the right place there so we're loosening it off a little bit and then tighten it back down that's going through there okay now uh, I'll have a look ahead and see what the next thing says it says to get the 4k out get that tightened all the way down so yeah we've got that that moves that that moves but quite stiffly uh which is probably a good thing i assume uh 4k seems to be that bit uh and seems to be that way round that's going on there like that and an em screw is holding that in place we've only got a couple more bits to go So the time is getting there. I know it's going to be a long video, this one, but I can only build at a certain speed. I could cut everything out, but then that'll be cutting everything out. So if you're getting bored, just use the fast forward button until you see me do something else. I won't mind. I won't even notice, to be honest. So, you know, feel free. Uh, right. So that's that sliding the knuckle arm 4K onto the end of the Kingpin 4M that you've just fixed in place. Use an EM screw to assemble these pieces. So yeah, that's going on there. So then we've got movement from that going that way. The whole thing does in fact rotate a bit there and this piston arm rotates there as well. So it's getting there. The next page, the final page of the build instructions, 4.10. Uh, put the completed suspension and brake parts together. Use two CM screws to join the knuckle arm and the spindle as shown. CM screws, there we go. Got two of them ready. So we've got that and that and that. Oh, won't it? It didn't say anything. I missed out that bit. That's not that yet. That's this bit. This is 410. It's not underneath it. It's next to it. So that's going. Let's get it the same way round as a picture. We've got that that way round and that that way round. So oh, that's where the other two screw holes come into play. We use them from this side. So that's going on there like that. So how can I? Which way does this twiddle? It twiddles that way, so I can get to that there with them. Right, okay. And this is going to go in there. So, right. So we've got to go through that screw hole into that screw hole. And then we can tighten it down. Well, not tighten it down. We'll just get it in make sure it lines up and then we'll get the other one in and then we can tighten everything down i like this I and mean, we've got to do this four times i assume there are brakes on all the, all the wheels aren't there that's the way the brakes work and that uh, right be careful how you hold this because some of it rotates and some of it doesn't so yeah um yeah figure out the best plates to hold to push to tighten and to screw them down it goes on there i move that over the other way so that cool it's nice it's got some weight and suspension to it it's all looking lovely does that look like that it sort of does yeah i'll give you that right okay now this piece is going onto there so that's that like that that's that like that we've got four l to go over the top what about the spring did i miss the spring completely right the spring is still in the picture down there right keep what you built in past together with the spring that you need in one of the next assembly sessions so right i'll keep that to one side so this is 
Mm. All right, that's got to be that way round. That piston's going into there. Where's that bit going then? It's got lines going all over the place. Uh, oh, okay. Is there a screw to hold that in place? Yes, join everything together with one GM screw going through the side there. Right, okay, yep. I thought the spring might go into the piston to create a, like a damping type thing, but apparently it doesn't. So what we've got to do is all right, let's get that in there first. This is just going through there like that. Then that piece has got to go in the middle of that piece and the screw goes through there to hold it in place. But that's got to go through that at the same time. Like that. Okay, I, I, it's working, it's getting there. The screw is coming from this side in that picture, so that's okay as well. I uh, don't feel like it's getting anywhere, but we'll just keep going. Adjusting and twiddling. Making sure that that lines up. That sort of does line up yet. Yeah. No, it wasn't. No. Wait a minute. Where's the bit gone? Oh, it's just falling out through there. So it obviously wasn't lined up. Let's try that again. Oh, you can actually see where it's attached. It wasn't quite lined up. So that's still got to go on there. That's still that way round, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so that's got to go a bit deeper in there. Like that, I think. Still doesn't feel like that's tightening up on anything. Uh, have I got, I've got enough wiggle room to maneuver that back in there when I need to. So I don't need to worry about that quite yet. The only thing I need to worry about is getting that screw through that hole. The less things you have to worry about lining up, the easier it's all going to be. That's not seeming to want to go through there anyway. Let's turn that round, just on the off chance that it's easier from the other side. There's no other bits that I can take off and do in a different order to make it any easier, I don't think. Ah, that seems easier. Maybe it just lined up properly, or maybe it was had to be one way round. I don't know. We'll find out on one of the other wheels. Uh, so tightening that down in there, that's gone in not quite enough. There we go. So now that can be manipulated around. Oh, you're going to tell me it can't now, aren't you? Yes, it can. It definitely can. Look, there we go. You can get that round there. Then that can go round there. Oh, it's going to... Yeah, yes, there we go. Right, so yes, it can be manipulated just to fit together like that. So we've got that piston working like that. Uh, that's working... Like that, and that's down there, and that is like that what it should be. Uh, now, we got to fit the wheel to it. So we've got to take this apart like we didn't really put it together properly last time, did we? So there's that and the little washer, the little plastic washer there. Uh, is this, yes, we're using an IM screw. I thought there'd be another one that we hadn't used yet. Right, so this is going on to there. Uh, there is a key cut out piece there and on there so obviously make sure that they line up you'll feel it jump into place i like that that looks professional that looks nice uh, right so before we put the im screw in we're using the little washer so i'm going to put the washer through the screw because that's the easy way of doing it so that's that then that can go into the middle That will go on there. Nice and secure, because this is obviously eventually going to hold the entire weight of the car. Uh, so the wheel will still turn. 
suspension seems to be working in lots of different angles and directions. Um, that connection piston seems to be okay. I don't think I'm worrying about that. Uh, that moves because it should. Uh, yeah, because that'll have to move because of the steering. Uh, we've got this to put back on there, which we can now put back on there properly. Because that's not going to have to come off again. If you're happy with that screw being in there tightened. Make sure that lines up and then push that home. Nice. A uh, little bit of polishing just to get rid of my fingerprints from it all. Where I've been playing around with stuff. Don't need to polish the black bits because they're okay. Uh, this is obviously going to be the steerage linking section. Uh, and that will go around there and that will attach and then that will let that turn. So yeah, I'm happy with how that's working. Yeah, all good. Uh, that is that. We've got the spring aside for next time as well. See how much I've moved worked because the mat moved. Lots of spare screws. I'll put the extra CM back away. Obviously, didn't need that one. So you get two, two extra of one, and ones of all the others. Strange. Spring for next time or another time. Uh, we've now attached the first wheel to the brake and suspension components. Keep what you have built so far in a safe place, together with the spring that you'll need for one of the next assembly sessions of your model car. I, yeah, I like it. I don't know anything about how they work or everything but obviously that's the brake the wheel still turns so you'll be able to wheel it around I like it, it looks good it looks professional from the outside it looks like a real wheel so that's that that's that that is this week's build um continuing into the magazine we've got uh norm grabowski i don't know who he is the legendary cookie car i do recognize that but I still don't like it much. It's all right, but yeah. I don't know. It doesn't do it for me. A little bit does it for me, a little bit, but not, not a great deal for some reason. I don't know why. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, signature apparently puts a skull on things. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's a woodcarver. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and nothing at all on the back, as is and home's desire uh that was that that was issue four thank you very much for watching um it's been a longer than normal episode but there's lots of fiddly stuff to do so hopefully you've enjoyed it i shall see you very shortly for issue five thank you for watching and thank you again for fan home for supplying me with the part work bye bye for now. <laughs>